Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm just doing a really quick video here on how to put a watercolour into a palette ready for use. I've got a palette here that has got a load of Royal and Langnickel watercolours in which you can see are quite badly cracked. That's because I didn't add enough glycerol when I was putting them in. So I'm going to put another one in just to show you. I'm putting this one in purely to show someone who asked me about it earlier on. And the one that I'm going to put in is a Dada and Rowney Aquafy, which is their student range. I have another video which I'll link to in the description which compares Aquafine with Cotman. I personally think Cotman is better quality. I don't use Aquafine at all anymore and I don't really recommend it too much. I think there are better student grade paints out there. I still have it because I use it for comparative purposes for review and so on. So I'm using 527 Light Red, which is a um, pretty dry one. It's a yellow iron oxide, red iron oxide pigment. So they're, they're uh, mineral pigments. And one thing you learn when you're, when you're putting your pigments and your paints out is that sometimes the ones that have got dyes in them tend to just shrink down and become kind of rubbery. Whereas these mineral based ones can need a little bit more glycerol just to kind of help them along. I don't use anything fancy, I use Supercook, which is now Dr. Rodka. Um Glycerine, I've had this bottle over 10 years, I bought it to make icing for a Christmas cake in 2005. And now I use it solely for this, because I found it in the back of a cupboard, and you need so little, it lasts ages. So the palette that I've got in front of me is one of those really cheap, so 12 or 24 well ones, and I've just got some paints in it that I reviewed a little while ago um, on Amazon. So they're all in here, and it's got these areas here, and you can see they have a slope. You pop the paint in quite easily down this end. It's very straightforward. When I'm using Cotman, I would put about a third of a tube in. If I'm using the 5 milliliter Winsor & Newton Professional Colours, i do it by eye, but probably about a third of a tube as well, maybe a bit more. Um, these are 8 milliliter tubes, Aquafine. So you can see I've already put a third of a tube into another palette, so I'm going to pop another third in. And what you would do is you would write with a permanent marker and just what it is so you have reference at the top, and that gives you a little area to work in. So all I do, and I'm going to mess this up because I'm doing it viewing it through the camera, is you just draw it, and some paints are runnier than others at this stage, which is why I like drawing them down because that kind of makes them all the same consistency after they've been dried down. Now the problem, I could leave that now to dry and it would crack. The reason is it loses too much water. So the reason we add glycerine is, or glycerol, as I, I have a tendency to call it glycerol, I'm a scientist, we call it glycerol, some of us call it propane 1,2,3 trial. Um, glycerine, it's all the same thing. doesn't matter whether you buy it from the supermarket, chemist, Wilkinson's in the UK, Amazon, buy cheap, it doesn't matter. There is no difference between vegetarian glycerine and normal glycerine, except one's animal, one's plant, but it's chemically the same. So other than ethics, it won't have an effect. Glycerine is what we call a humectant. It likes to suck in water. And one thing you may notice if you store a bottle of it for a long time, is that the volume in the bottle increases and it becomes runnier. And what it's done is it's sucked in moisture from the air. So when you're using it, if that happens, throw it away because it won't work quite so well anymore. I'm going to put it in here and the idea is it sucks in moisture from the air. It helps to keep the paint kind of rubbery and damp and not kind of rock hard and cracking. And it means when you wet it before use, it will re-wet really well. So what I do is I take a cocktail stick and I like these ones with a ridge on the end, but you can use any cocktail stick. And I just dip it in the glycerine up to about half the depth. And I just let a drop or two fall onto the paint. Now, for these particular paints, I know one or two drops is sufficient. For these Royal and Langnickel ones, I think double that would be probably fine. What I then do is I tend to do this um, to paraphrase Game of Thrones. I stick it with the pointy end. I'll quote Game of Thrones. I'll stick it with the pointy end. Cocktail sticks are great because they don't waste much paint when you stir things with them. And you give it a really good stir and you must get right into the corners, just do little circles, otherwise you're going to get it everywhere. You can do this really well and easily and you won't get it into all of the other wells once you've got the hang of it. And once you've done it, you'll get a lovely homogenised mix. And it will kind of look like cake batter. You won't be able to see the glycerine anymore, it'll be thoroughly mixed in. Now if I were to walk away from this for 10 minutes, I might see a kind of shiny film appear on the top and that's sometimes the glycerine. 
all that's happened is the pigment has sunk and the binder containing the glycerin is now on the surface and it looks shiny. That's perfectly normal, don't worry about that at all. Also don't worry if when you pour it from the tube it has separated from its binder. That happens in shipping and storage. All you have to do is mix it with a cocktail stick and dry it down and it will work perfectly. Now the average watercolour contains your pigment, whether that's a mineral or a dye. It will contain um, the general binder, usually gum arabic. It will contain some other ingredients like glycerin or honey and the really good quality paints to keep them moist. And these cheap ones will contain a filler, which is kind of a chalky thing. And what they usually do is they coat grains of a chalky mineral with the minerals that are intended. So what it does is basically it gives the effect of larger grains, so it's cheaper. So if you think of it, it's rather than using football sized balls of pigment, they use football sized balls of chalk and coat them in pigment. So they're kind of painted, if you like. And that means that when they're on the paper, they kind of look the same. When they're mixing, they can misbehave. It just means it's cheaper. It's commonly done with student grade paints. You might find those particular paints don't mix very well. That's my only caveat of using student grade paints. But what will happen is when it's sitting here, those fillers and pigments will sink slightly in the binder and the glycerine and that's why you'll get that oily film on the top. It's not actually oily at all, it's just glycerine, um, gum arabic and water. Now what you need to do with it now is leave it, don't touch it for 48 hours, just leave it in a room that is not too humid, that is not too hot and is not freezing cold. Just leave it, I find cool rooms work best. Out of the way, nice and flat with the palette open and you just leave it and what you do is you come back to it after two days and what you're going to do with it we'll just pretend this one here is two days old you get your knuckle and you just make a little dent okay and it should give slightly and have a rubbery layer on the top and it should just sink down if it's rock hard don't worry that's not a problem at all by doing that, what you're doing is you're testing whether it's drying okay. If it's really sticky and gets all over your knuckle, that tells you it hasn't dried quite enough yet and you need to leave it longer. But by doing that little test, you have a nice side effect. You leave a little well, and that little well is really good for getting some water into when you want to use the paints. So that can be really advantageous. So you just leave them to dry. If they crack, don't worry. Just make a note of which ones crack. And next time you pour your palette with those colours, just double the amount of glycerine and you won't have a problem. When you're ready to use them, obviously these are rock hard, don't add water with the brush. That's a common mistake is to try and pick them up with a wet brush. What you do is you take your mister and you give a good spray. Sorry, I can't get a good spray. There we go. And I really do mean that kind of amount. So they're nice and wet and shiny and you can see that there and you leave them for 10 to 15 minutes and then you paint with them and there'll be lovely and wet paint on the top and it won't be a complete puddle it won't be a puddle all the way to the bottom of the palette and when you finish a painting session just leave it with the lid open it'll dry back down and you can re-wet and reuse and dry and store these paints as many times as you like for as long as you like and they will work perfectly well one slight note, if you have got light fast pigments and you'll see on the side of the tube anything with poor light fastness like Opera Rose, Prussian Blue, just lay, when they're drying down, a sheet of tissue paper or vellum over the top to protect them from light and keep them closed when they're not in use and you won't get any fading. Thank you very much. If you have any problems or suggestions, leave them in the comments and I'll reply as soon as I can. Good night.